Hello everyone, welcome to our talk on task stream, accelerating task parallel workloads by recovering program structure. Our goal in this work is to broaden the scope of accelerators to workloads with irregular parallelism. These include tree and graph workloads, databases, and matrix decomposition. The common properties across these workloads is heterogeneous tasks of variable size and resource requirements and inter-task dependencies. Existing task parallel works do not take inter-task dependencies into account and they miss on several opportunities as we demonstrate later. To visualize the issue with current task parallel works, consider this task dependence graph where the nodes are task types and the edges represent inter-task dependencies. On a traditional multi-code reconfigurable hardware, different instances of these task types would be scheduled at the cores while they would communicate via shared memory. The synchronization via shared memory often becomes a critical bottleneck and hurts performance. Our insight is to expose these inter-task dependencies in the hardware and enforce them using a novel and distributed task management system. So in the previous example, the dependencies would now be satisfied by passing through these units. Our goal is to enable efficient task parallelism for reconfigurable accelerators. We developed a novel representation of programs called task stream to enable load balance and locality optimizations. So for load balance, we have a creation edge where the child task is created by the parent and scheduled for balanced load. In the presence of producer consumer relationship, the parent and child tasks are scheduled together and the data is streamed through them. In the presence of coarse grain read reuse, the tasks may be dynamically bashed and the data may be multicast to them. In this talk, I will first discuss the inefficiencies of shared memory based task models and then describe our solution for task stream, which is a novel program representation to exploit the lost program structure. And then we discuss how the task stream is implemented on reconfigurable hardware. And then I will go over the evaluation and conclude. I will use Chaleski as a driving example during this talk to motivate our proposals. So here is the pseudocode of Chaleski where there is an outer loop and several computations are being performed. You do not need to understand the pseudocode as I will go over the computations and dependencies later. So starting with computations, here, there are three type, kinds of computations. One is scalar computation, which we call point, then the computation on a vector, and then on a matrix. As these computations have different computation complexity, Chaleski has heterogeneous tasks. So now let's see how heterogeneous tasks will be exploited using a traditional task dependence graph. So for doing that, we also need to know the dependencies. So within a single iteration, the point task has a scalar dependency on the vector and the matrix task. So in order to design a task dependence graph for this kind of a workload, what we would do is we would create these three tasks, which are point, vector, and matrix. For scalar dependencies, the creation edge is uh, inserted into it. The next question comes is what should be the granularity of tasks? This puts a trade-off on the pressure on the task management hardware or the flexibility in scheduling. So here we would tile this uh, Chaleski matrix and vector into squares and triangles. And then finally, in order to enforce all the dependencies, we need to put a barrier somewhere or like for program completion. So to understand the dependencies at a core screen level, let's look at multiple iterations. What happens here is that across iterations, there's a core screen dependency between each element of the matrix. Typically, the, these dependencies are enforced only at a coarse grain. That's why what it would do is like they would put a complete barrier on the task dependence graph. To understand its impact, let's see how this task dependence graph would be implemented on this uh, traditional hardware. So the task instance for one would be created at the reconfigurable core, and then its uh, vector and matrix tasks would be created. And these would then write data to memory at a barrier. So as these tasks are scheduled, being unaware of the configuration information, it can incur a significant reconfiguration overhead. As the tasks are of variable size, it will cause load imbalance. And then finally, because of waiting on a barrier, there will be synchronization overhead. In order to deal with these challenges, we propose a novel task stream execution model, 
that encompasses all the necessary information for efficient execution of task parallelism on reconfigurable hardware. One such feature is core mask. So what we do is each of the task type can be annotated with a core mask where the set bit to represent which core can its instances be scheduled to. So for example, the instances of point and vector can be scheduled to only core zero, while for matrix they can be scheduled to core one, two, and three here. So therefore, there would be no need for reconfiguration. The most important aspect of task stream is how we exploit the intertask communication and computation structure, which we do using three edges. The first one is creation that enables balanced load. And then the other two are stream recovery edges, which involves streaming edge for producer consumer dependence. And then there is a batching edge for exploiting spatial reuse. So let's start with creation. Here, we extract a part of the task stream graph of Cholesky where we look at point to matrix task. So here, the different instances of matrix task can be a variable size. Here, we introduce an annotation of size hint that can specify the relative size of a task instance. So for point, it will always be one, so it's a constant, while for matrix, it can be a triangle or a square, give it value of one and two. So without any size hint, all these task instances would be dealt with similarly. And then they could be scheduled so that some cores get too much more work as like three squares, while other cores can get much lesser work. However, if the scheduler is trying to optimize for the total size of the work that each core gets, then the distribution would look something like this, where the cores with more tasks would get more triangles so that the total amount of work is similar. Now for streaming edge, as we saw in the example with knife tasks, we put a barrier after matrix task so as to enforce these dependencies between the matrix elements of iteration K and K, iteration K plus one. However, here what we can do is we can express those dependencies using a streaming edge. So what that means is the task instances of iteration one and iteration two are dependent. In the hardware, these dependent task instances would be co-scheduled and the data would be streamed in through them. Concurrently scheduled tasks increases parallelism, hence the performance. Cholesky is a very regular workload. However, we found that intertask combination structure can occur in many irregular workloads as well. In this slide, I show the example of k nearest neighbors, where the implementation involves to first traverse the KD tree in order to filter out the data range that we want to look into and then do a dense search. So for any uh, can and query, what it would do is it would first traverse the tree. Then when it reaches the leaf node, it would do a dense search on the original data. And there can be multiple such parallel queries. So let's consider this example program order of queries. Here, what I have done is I have marked the, the queries where which end up on the same leaf node with the color blue. In our batching optimization, we dynamically identify this kind of a reuse and schedule these together. So in this example, Q1, Q3, Q5, and Q7 would be scheduled at the same time. And then V11 would be accessed only once and multicast through them. Such rescheduling enables exploiting spatial locality. We exploit structure recovery across a wide range of workloads using a novel program representation. Pure streaming was useful for Cholesky while batch plus stream is extremely useful for k nearest neighbors and sparse matrix multiplier. Size hint is beneficial for graph convolution networks where the vertices may require varying amount of work. So let's move to how do we implement task stream on a reconfigurable hardware. The first idea is to implement task stream as a hierarchical graph where the task stream nodes are implemented as data flow graphs, which are a combination of compute and memory nodes connected by the dependence edges. In terms of hardware, also we start with a traditional hardware known to work well for the data flow execution model and then extend it for our task stream model. So here there is a decoupled computation hardware for CGRA computation and address generation hardware, which are connected by the port interfaces. Originally, without tasks, the control core would be responsible for assigning work to the computation and memory. However, now work may be created dynamically and that will be handled by this task management unit. We also have a router because it's a multi-core hardware connected by a mesh. From now on, we will abstract this reconfigurable core and only focus on the task management unit. 
So let's start with the creation edge. Here, there are two broad components. First is the task argument buffer that maintains all the ready and pending tasks ordered by their ID. So first is the task argument buffer that maintains all the ready and pending tasks annotated with a TID. So for any pending tasks, there, there's an acknowledgement buffer which will acknowledge the task that the data that you are waiting on is available and will can set that task ready. So the benefit of this task argument buffer is to greedily schedule tasks as they get ready. So as a working example, let's say the control core creates an explicit task T1, which will then go over the hardware and be executed on the reconfigurable core, which can then create some dynamic tasks. So those dynamic tasks will go through this acknowledgement buffer and be stored in the task argument buffer till they get ready. And after that, they can also go and be scheduled on the reconfigurable code. So let's move to the batching hardware. So we have this additional hardware called task batching buffer, which maintains data ID and, and the tasks batched corresponding to that data ID. So here the difference is that in any row, there can be more than one tasks that were corresponding to a single data ID. And then there is a CAM search module, which will identify if it's, there is a batching opportunity or not. So let's say there are these two tasks created by the reconfigurable code. They will go through this, and then they may be scheduled on the same row. During execution, single task could be executed corresponding to each data ID. When the data is available, that data may be multicast to all the dependent tasks. So during this multicast, there are certain messages which are exchanged between two cores in order to check for the resource availability and other things. To explain that, let's look at the task protocol. So here is the task stream graph where the T1 task creates tasks T2 and T3, and which are then dependent on each other using a streaming edge. Let's consider three cores here, where, T, where there's a core where the original task is present and where the, it will create T2 and T3. Then there are cores where T2 might be scheduled or T3 might be scheduled. Please note that there can be multiple instances of T3, uh, as in the case of batching, you might be streaming to multiple dependent tasks. So the first step would be to create T2 and T3, and then the parent task would be scheduled at its core. And where its data is available, it will inform T3, which will then be scheduled to some core. So when it gets hold of the resources at that core, it will be in the execution state, and then it will send the ready acknowledgement message to T2. After this, the T2 can start streaming data in. And then when all the cores have received all the data, they will send the done signal and the streaming communication can be closed. Let's move to evaluation. Uh, we program Delta hardware using the C plus intrinsic and use DSL for task stream and data flow graphs. We simulate using Gem5 and Ruby. Our baselines are a 24 core SKL CPU, a static parallel CGRA, which has no tasks and the, all the work will be scheduled by the control core. And then we study two configurations of our proposed hardware. One is only tasks where only the creation size and optimization is on. And the second is with Delta with tasks and stream recovery, where the, all the optimizations are on. Here are the system configuration where we use 16 cores and 256 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. We study five workloads using synthetic data sets with varying size and densities. In terms of the overall performance, we normalize the speed up over static parallel execution. With tasks, we can get some speed up. So, however, the speed ups are only moderate as they are still limited by the inter-task dependencies. With stream recovery, the performance is boosted. For example, in Cholesky, streaming optimization resulted in improved parallelism while in KNN, the batching optimization resulted in improved reuse. To understand where the benefits are coming from, in this plot, we determine how much memory traffic was converted to pure network traffic using our stream recovery edges. So what we find is that more than 50% of the traffic in most of the workloads is converted to the network traffic, and only a few remain. And that was the source for speed up. So now we looked at like what were the what was the impact of stream recovery. We also want to understand like overall how these stream recovery and load balancing work together. Um, for that, let's look into the cycle level utilization of the Cholesky workload for two scenarios. Uh, for the first one, we show for only tasks which is not optimized. So the thing here is that you cannot do the streaming communication, so you still have a barrier. So you have a barrier after each iteration, but within that you can, but within that you can balance using the size and optimization. 
when you switch on the stream recovery optimization, there is no barriers and also you improve on the utilization. The reason is because the streaming edge results in improved parallelism and then only the load balancing optimizations can help you more. So they work together to help each other. In conclusion, task parallelism enables better load balancing, but at the cost of hurting program structure. So our task stream execution model exposes locality and compute structure as first-class abstractions in the execution model. And we achieve 2.2x speed up over the static parallel version. Finally, our belief is that in order for the accelerators to be successful and broadly adopted, they need to be efficient on a wide variety of workloads. Supporting task parallelism in such accelerators is definitely one step towards that direction. Thank you.